a North State neurologist who sees a lot of the local patients is, in his words, extremely alarmed at their lessening cognitive abilities. They can't think clearly. How many people are getting forgetful? Your short-term memory is the first thing to go as your neurological system becomes damaged from air pollution. And now look at the studies we have. And I, again, I don't want anybody to believe a word I'm saying. Please just search this out. We're now seeing studies from major institutions stating that particulates in the air appear to be the greatest single causal factor for neurological disease. They don't acknowledge climate engineering, of course. That would be a grave mistake on their part because the hammer of the government would be lowered on them immediately in countless ways. It's just a fact. This is a story that the government will try to hide as long as they can, but this issue, more than any other issue, affects every single one of us, everything we hold dear. It's the greatest single effect on the future that our children may not have now because of the damage being done by these programs. A lot of sources of human damage to the planet. I'm not trying to ignore that at all. But the greatest single assault on the environment, on us, on the biosphere as a whole, is without question, mathematically, climate engineering. One way to think about these geoengineering technologies is as an impulse to mastery of nature. And lots of people say, this is the very impulse that got us into this mess in the first place. So geoengineering could be used as a way to prevent more effective actions on climate change. For political reasons, but also because they limit our social imaginations, our ways to see other forms of response. We might so buy in to the techno fix that we can't see another way forward. I'm torn. Wherever you see the jet chemtrails go over, you're gonna get aluminum barium strontium coming down on you. Why would we not believe it's happening when what we see in the sky matches exactly the expressed goal of numerous geoengineering patents, about 160 or more. Why would we not believe this is happening when every element showing up in the rain tests are the primary elements named in those geoengineering patents? Why would we not believe this is happening when we have escalating levels in very sh short time frames, as, much, as short as five years, we see rain levels of aluminum, for example, escalating as much as 50,000%. California air quality studies do not show these metals migrating from China. And it's of recent origin, so you know this bombardment of heavy metals that's raining down on us is, is coming from somewhere. Why would we not believe geoengineering is occurring when the weather patterns are so altered here in exactly the manner stated by geoengineers and reports on the consequences for geoengineering, which are diminished rainfall, which are increased ozone destruction. We have a massive ozone hole in the northern hemisphere now. Other ways of uh, managing the ionosphere, which the HARP was really designed to do, was to inject energy into the ionosphere be able to actually control it. And, uh, but that work is, has been completed. Uh, the Air Force... Uh... I, you know, these are the same people that don't have any problem funding the you know, world wars so I, I think their agenda of what needs to be done and what is what is right and proper for humanity is probably somewhat different than um, your yours and mine's uh, my value set mm. that, that I, I think we're really dealing with a, with a very very different mindset and they love control plain and simple they like control and I think once you begin to control something that should be random or or, or driven by the natural forces of the planet it becomes very addictive <laughs> and if you can see your results in higher grain prices so you can you know from, because of a drought in Australia if you can you know bring in Arctic coal to Europe and then you've previously bought you know oil futures or you're trading on the Chicago Board of Trade, you know, heating degree days or cooling degree days or, or precipitation totals. There's all these financial derivatives attached to weather. Yeah. If you can, if you know what's going on in the weather playbook, then you, you know, the game is rigged. The game is rigged. In 1983, I did radio tomography with 30 watts looking for oil in the ground. I found 26 oil wells over a nine state area and 100% of the time was accurate, which is 30 watts of power beaming straight into solid rock. HARP uses a billion watts beam 
came straight into the ionosphere for experiments. Harp uses a billion watts. Beam straight into the ionosphere for experiments. Picture these strings on the piano as layers of the earth. Each one has its own frequency. What we used to do is beam radio waves into the ground and it would vibrate any strings that were present in the ground. We might get a sound back like and we'd say that's natural gas. We might get a sound back like and we say that's crude oil. We were able to identify each frequency. We accomplished this with just 30 watts of radio power. If you do this with a billion watts, the vibrations are so violent that the entire piano would shake. In fact, the whole house would shake. In fact, the vibrations could be so severe underground that could even cause an earthquake. While we feel that HARP is a unique facility, it's not the only one like it in the world. Uh, HARP has some, some capabilities that uh, we feel are better than some of the others. You can change the frequencies. Um, you can shift the beam so that you can, you can move it from one part of the, of the ionosphere to another. And it has quite a bit more power than some of the other facilities throughout the world that are doing the same kinds of research. I chose a what's called a phased array antenna for the patents because it can be aimed. Picture holding your microwave oven in your hands with the door open. Then you can move it around and send those microwaves different directions. And for these applications where I wanted precise control of where the power was, uh, I felt that was the best type of antenna to use. Los Angeles Times on April 21st, you said that the you told the Associated Press uh, that the American government has created weather tampering techniques so that the New World Order will be able to starve millions of Americans and to control the rest. Would you explain what you were trying to say? Well, it, it, what I was trying to say is exactly what I said. There is weather control techniques. We have a complete package on that, which I did not bring, but I certainly will see to it that it is brought in for the record. Number one, the entire patents on the equipment. Number two, Senator Claiborne Pell's complete statement and story of his own that not only does it exist, but that we even utilize it as far back as the Vietnam War. You might want to touch base with right. Senator this is a forced partnership between us and them. This is how we will be eternally owned by them. This is how they can push our biology from Homo sapien to Homo evolutus without our having a say in it. For now, engineered technology in all living things is a secret. But one day we may be charged with unlawful possession of something that has become a part of us that we cannot get rid of. The nature of biology is to adapt. As more unnatural elements enter our bodies, if we cannot reject them, we will find ways to accommodate them. You could call it invasion of the body snatchers meet sleeping with the enemy. In fact, the original Body Snatchers movie contains some interesting lines. Your new bodies are taking you over, cell for cell, atom for atom, and you'll be born into an untroubled world. Don't fight it, Miles. It's no use. Their bodies were now hosts harboring an alien form of life, a cosmic form. Metabiology was a term coined by the famous Jonas Salk of the Salk polio vaccine. It describes a form of biological prospecting, exploiting genetics, using chemistry, physics, and radiation for commercial and other goals. The 1940s and 50s gave us the birth of radiation biology, the techniques of which were used to decipher the mysteries of heredity, genes, and immunity. Geneticists plumbed chemistry and physics using x-rays and UV light to irradiate plants, fungi, and fruit flies to see how mutations altered amino acids and enzymes to form a new biochemistry. All this continues today. We are living, walking laboratories for powerful science in a society of increasing control. We are being altered. The future being spoken of is happening now. My question is, how will we transcend this?